Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be talking about permeability, which is the um, next thing in the groundwater unit. So the other video was about porosity, so make sure you have watched that before this video. So here we go, permeability. Permeability is the ability of material to allow water to pass through it, which means there's pretty much um, space in between the particles, and water is able to soak through it. If there was no space between the particles, you're not going to get any water to get through it. It's like comparing a sponge, which has a lot of holes in it for water to soak into, to your tile floor in your house. The water is not going to be able to really soak through that because it's solid. So the permeability rate is the rate or speed at which the water passes through the material. The bigger the space is, like in this picture, the faster it will seep through. The smaller the space, like over here, the slower it will seep through because it has to navigate around all these little tight corners and particles. This one, it just can go a direct route down. So the more connected the pores, the higher the permeability. So it's easier for the water to travel through it. These would be considered more connected. It's just another way of saying it's easier. These are less connected. So it's harder for the water to move through because the spaces are so much smaller. So even though large particles and small particles would have the same porosity, the large particles are better connected so water, water can actually get through them faster. So the bigger the particles, the easier it is for the water to flow through it. Therefore, the permeability, how easy it is for the water to get through, will go up. So when you see the word permeability, you're going to think how easy it is the water to get through it. So in this one, pebbles, sand, silt, and clay, pebbles are going to have the highest permeability because they're the biggest. And then clay will have the lowest permeability because it's the smallest. That's on this chart. So let's see how we do. These are first questions about porosity, which goes with the last video. So we're going to see how much you remember and then build on this. So first one, rounded particles have blank and curved surfaces. I would say maybe like sharp, jagged. The more rounded the object, the blank its porosity. The higher the porosity. Remember that the angular ones fit together really well and don't allow the water to really have any space. Porosity means space. Particles that are loosely packed have blank space between them. More. As the particles come closer together, the porosity will do what? it should decrease because porosity is the amount of space so if you have particles coming closer together it will get smaller particles that are sorted are all blank the same size particles that are unsorted are all different sizes the more unsorted particles are the blank the porosity should be the less. Remember, if they're all unsorted, there's less space because you got the small particles filling in the gaps between the big particles. Okay. This is permeability. So permeability is going to be the speed that the water gets through. Now, if you look at these three pictures, there is a lot of little particles in here. Look at all the little tiny gaps that the water would have to squeeze through. This one here is going to have the lowest permeability. It's going to take the water forever to get from here to the bottom. It's going to have to navigate through all these little pieces and try to get through like this. Over here, this is going to be the highest permeability. 
if you look, the water could just go like, it's easier for the water to navigate through. There's not as many spaces to get through. Look at my little diagrams. This is easier. Okay, the first containers particles right here are smaller than the third containers particles. This will be three, this will be two, this will be one. But the three containers all have the same porosity. They all have the same pore space. If you remember from the porosity video, you can have three different containers with different size particles, but they'll have the same porosity. Even though the blank of their pore spaces are different, the size, this has bigger spaces than here, if you add up all the space in the same size container, it will be equal. So this is a porosity little paragraph. So now we're going to do the permeability section. How easy it is for the water to get through these, which we already talked about. The more space between the particles will enable the water to flow through faster. Because of this, the first container will have a blank permeability than the second one. It will have a lower. The third container will have the highest permeability. As particle size goes up, permeability will increase. So if you're confused on this right now, it's because you don't understand the vocabulary. You need to know the difference between porosity and permeability. You need to know what permeability is. It's how easy or fast it is for water to get through it. And you would have to be replacing this word in the sentence with that vocab definition. So you could say, as particle size increases, the speed at which the water will be able to flow through will increase because there's more space. Capillary action is when water gets pulled up through soil. So in order to have this happen, and a good example is if you hover a paper towel over a little puddle that goes up into the paper towel, it works best literally the only question I ever see on this. It works best with the smallest particles. You need a lot of particles to be really close together and it will like pull up the water naturally. So it occurs because water is very sticky. The smaller the pores, the higher the water will end up rising. This is the key. So as particle size increases, capillarity, which is another word for capillary action, goes down. Which characteristic is most likely the same for these two containers? Well, let's go through what these mean. Infiltration rate is the speed that water seeps through. Remember, infiltration is the to move through soil. Water retention is how much water gets held in the soil. So you're going to have the most water retention with the smallest particles. You might want to write that down. Because the small particles like trap the water inside of it. So it's going to retain a lot of water. It's going to keep a lot of the water. Capillarity. That's um, the water moving up. You need smaller particles equals higher capillarity. So that's not going to be the same in these two. So it looks like uh, number four porosity is going to be the best answer. Remember, they have different size spaces, but this one has less of them. This one has more, so it ends up equal. These are equal porosity. Next question, for infiltration to occur, that is the water sinking through the ground, the ground must be what? Well, impermeable means that water can't get through. So that's out. If it's saturated, that means it's full. So obviously, you're not going to have infiltration occur if the ground's already full. Infiltration is when water seeps through the ground. If it's full, it's not going to be able to go. 
So you want permeable and not saturated. B is the best answer. All right, water pollution. This is gonna sound pretty obvious to you. Um, this occurs when substance in the environment become abundant, this means a lot, or a high amount, enough to have a negative effect on humans. So eventually, you know, if you dump, um, if you throw a piece of garbage into a, a river and it's the first piece of garbage in there, it's probably not going to do that much. It's still bad. But if you get, keep doing it and doing it and doing it, it's going to be a really bad situation. So you can get pollution from a lot of places, industrial places, farm runoff, uh, cities wasted, uh, waste humans throwing stuff in the garbage and into the, the lakes. Um, but creatures need a certain amount of oxygen, and if you put garbage in it, it's going to deplete it. So how do we pollute? We you, um, have septic tanks in the ground, and sometimes they leak, and our sewage water goes into the groundwater, and that's gross for the animals. Some people wash their car and dump their chemicals or house chemicals into the grass, which goes into the groundwater, which pollutes our groundwater. Um, when people drop salt down to prepare for snowstorms and stuff, some of the salt is not good for the ground, and it leaks in and causes issues. Garbage trucks dumping trash at landfills is gross, and that, all that garbage juice leaks into the ground, and that's bad. And then burying your pets into the ground once they pass away, or cemeteries all pollute the groundwater as well, produce a lot of virus and bacteria. All right, let's do a couple of practice questions. Uh, let's do these ones. All right, number 33. Flash flooding often occurs in city areas because why? Flooding. Your best answer here is C. The roads and pavement is gonna make the water not be able to go into the ground, which is gonna cause flood. 34. Most infiltration of precipitation will occur when the Earth's soil is, we did a question just like this, Most of it will be going into the ground when the ground is unsaturated, meaning not full, and permeable, meaning it's able to move water through it. B. As the temperature of soil decreases from 10 degrees to negative 5, negative 5 degrees, that's freezing, so the ground froze. What happens to the infiltration rate of the water through the soil? Well, if the ground's frozen right now, it should go down. It's not going to be able to move through it. Why does water move very slowly through clay? It's because clay is the tiniest particle, and the pore spaces in between clay are like nothing. So it takes very, very long. It has small particles. D. Which type of soil would infiltrate most slowly? We just did it. Clay is the smallest particle, so it would take the longest. Pebbles would be the fastest. Going on, question 137. The cause of groundwater supplies becoming unfit for human use is usually why? Why would groundwater turn bad? Unfit means not good. Contamination, Pol this is another name for pollution. If you contaminate it, you can't use it anymore. Um, 139 in the top right. How will the quality of the environment most likely be affected by the continued dumping of large amount of waste into a river? This is pollution. So how will pollution affect the environment? Major damage could occur downstream from the industrial plant, meaning down a river, all the pollution can go down a river and cause problems to a city that's down the river. So C is the best answer. Uh, a, it will definitely not be unaffected. Minor temporary disruptions will only occur near it. No, it, the, the waste is going to travel down the river, so it's going to affect a lot of places. D, the environment will always adjust favorably. That means good to waste? No. 14. According to the diagram, which location would the water probably be most polluted? Well, you got landfill polluting at A. Then that will that garbagey water will move down to the city and then they'll add more to it. So now it's going to be really gross and then it's going to move down C and then the factory is going to add to that. 
it's going to be super gross. So then D is going to be the most affected because you got the added landfill grossness, city grossness, and factory grossness. So D is going to be the worst affected. A soil sample with a large amount of space between the particles will have a blank. Well, let's go one by one. A, low permeability. That would be small particles because the water wouldn't be able to get through easily. So that's not right. Low infiltration rate. That happens in small particles. So that's not either. High porosity, yes. That's a lot of space. High capillarity, that's small particles. Okay. All right, one more question. The diagram represents three identical beakers filled to the same level with beads. If the packing of the beads within each beaker is the same, which graph best represents the porosity within each beaker? I will give you a hint. We've done this question like three times already. The answer is D. They have the same porosity. They're equal porosity. This, there's less spaces here, but if you were to add up all the space in this one, all the space in this one, and all the space between all these little particles, they would all be equal. All right, so my advice to you, big advice for this unit, make flashcards. No the vocab. So that's my advice to you. Um, email me if you have any questions and good luck. See you later.